As creators unite, we'll find that they often find ways to pat themselves on the back and congratulate one another. This is no different in the world of manga, as a plethora of manga wars exists of varying prestige to celebrate the various works that have come out throughout the years. Take the Shogakukan Manga Award, who is one of the most impressive ones, but that largely remains unknown to the world outside of Japan. So let's take a look at this award, its history, and some of its notable recipients to see its impressive lineups. Sponsored by Shogakukan Publishing, one of the largest publishing companies in Japan and in the world, with a strong presence in the manga space, its titular award is an annual award that first began giving out this achievement in 1955. Originally a simple general manga of the year type award, the award eventually added the boys or shonen genre and the girls or shoujo genre in 1980, with the children's category being added in 1982. While some changes have come and gone, the categories have since amended down as general, shonen, shoujo, and the for kids section. There are also lifetime achievement and outstanding work type awards given out, but those are too far and few between to actually count as a category. As the award started in 1955, there was only one award recipient, as there was only one category, and this would continue until 1974. The first ever recipient was Noboru Baba's Bhutan, which was a children's storybook. I haven't been able to find good translations, as I imagine the audience of this would be quite small, but the art is incredibly charming from the bits I did see. In 1975, a new general category of kids was added and was won by Moto Hagio's They Were Eleven and The Poe Clan. And while I myself haven't followed Hagio's work much as it is both before my time and not targeted to me as an audience, she is largely considered to be one of, if not the, god of shoujo manga. In fact, The Poe Clan especially remains in still technically releasing state even now nearly 50 years later. Considering her future status, the award having recognized her so early on in her career shows that they may at least have a good eye. 1975 wasn't just a moto show however, as another big name, Gogo 13, was also recognized. As the oldest manga still in publication, Gogo 13 may not be a trendy name nowadays, but it's a highly respectable one. In 1981, the For Kids category was formally introduced with a slight separation from the teen demographic. You may have heard this small name Doraemon, a household name in many countries in Asia, and a nice childhood memories for many generations of kids. In this same year, Akira Toriyama would also win an award for himself. While the mangaka's name is now synonymous with Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball wouldn't be a thing for years to come and instead we have his cult classic Dr. Slump, whose mascot characters do actually make an appearance in Dragon Ball. While Dragon Ball would be what cements Toriyama's legacy, Dr. Slump would be what sparks his popularity. By 1983, we'll see there being a division again with the shoujo genre being formalized. Now, not every award recipient will become a legendary or long-running series, but most are worth a peek. Some of them are interesting stories, others have neat premises, a good number have strong characters, while others like the 1984 winner Kunikumam, or Ultimate Muscle, are simply fun. As we enter the 1990s, Mobile Police Pat Labor, a niche but interesting mecha series, will win an award in 1990. While there are now more categories, they also don't give these out willy-nilly as there have been years where if no suitable candidate existed in one category or another, they simply don't give one out. In 1992, for example, Basara, a post-apocalyptic story, would win the award for the shoujo genre, but no series would win the for kids category. As we move closer and closer to the 21st century, the names become more and more recognizable to modern day fans. Yu Yu Hakusho, the Hunter x Hunter mangaka's first hit and a fan favorite with its own passionate fan base, would win in 1993. Slam Dunk, a now legendary basketball story, which we did review on the podcast, be gentle with our thoughts, would win in 1994. Major, a now classic baseball series, would win in 1995. And Project Arms, a weird reimagining of the Alice in Wonderland story with a lot more violence, would win in 1998. As we enter the 2000s, it feels like we accelerate in recognizable names. The year 2000 awarded Monster and Detective Conan, with one being recognized as one of the most psychologically thrilling series, while the other created a whole new generation of Sherlock Holmes-esque mystery story fans. 2001 would highlight series like Heat, a Reservoir Dogs-esque story on one end of the spectrum, and on the other end of the spectrum, Inuyasha, which blurred the lines for many furries out there. 2002 would continue to deliver with 20th Century Boys, which is both underrated and overrated at the same time, Satch Bell, a personal favorite of mine, and Nana, a story who is a little too real at times. 
Even a weakish year like 2003 with series like Dr. Kodo and easygoing Doctor Story and Yaki Take Japan, a cooking series, will present Full Metal Alchemist, a series often agreed to be the poster boy of anime and manga in general, its award. 2004 will present Team Medical Dragon, another Doctor Story but with a more edgy main character. Fan favorite Bleach and Sergeant Frog, a cute Invader Zim S story. 2005 was a quieter year with Spirit of the Sun, a natural disaster survival story, Rainbow, a prison survival story, and Wildlife, a vet story, being okay but not all that in my opinion. 2006 would have series like Kakaishi, an old school Jujutsu Kaisen, and Seven Seeds, a weird post apocalyptic story. 2007 would put forth Bambino, a restaurant story, Kurosagi, a gambling and big brain story, both underrated in their own right, and Ace of Diamond, a fan favorite baseball series. Some years are quieter, like 2008, 2009, and 2011, while others are more selective and very audience specific, like 2010, whose winners Ushijima the Lone Shark, whose title says a lot, and Space Brothers, a heartwarming story of a man's dream of becoming an astronaut, are both very good but for very, very different people. 2012 would include series like I Am a Hero, a super weird zombie story, and Hiromu Arakawa's second winning work, Silver Spoon, which was all about that farming life. Magi, who has one of my favorite openings, would win in 2012. Bee Blues, a new age football story, and Yokai Watch, a new age Pokemon like IP, would be there in 2014. Haikyu, who revitalized the love of volleyball for many, and My Love Story, a fun spin on the romance comedy genre, would be winners in 2015. Mom Psycho, one's other batshit crazy work, would get a nod in 2016. Promise Neverland, who started off so goddamn well and pulled up Death Note, would win in 2017. Dr. Stone, the new age magical school bus show, would be there for 2018. 2019 would have Ao Ashi, a modern football series, and Kaguya-sama, Love is War, an interesting Sundere vs. Sundere story. 2020 presented Teasing Master Takagi-san, a charming growing up together story. Chainsaw Man, an insane Monster Hunter story. We also ran through the series on our podcast. And wait for it, Duel Masters, whose similarity to other card game series cannot be ignored, but it would also win its own award. And most recently, in t- for the year 2021, Komi Can Communicate, an interesting take on social anxiety, would be a winner. Now, this video doesn't serve as an extensive list of winners, as you would find a more detailed list by looking up a wiki page, for example. Instead, what I wanted to show you was the interesting variety of winning manga for this specific award. While it's true that different categories exist, even within those categories, we have large swings in the flavor of stories. Again, I need to reiterate that not every winning series is instantly recognizable in the same way not every Oscar winner is a box office hit. The picks are often worth consideration and interesting in one aspect or another, so jump in! I included the wiki page listing all the series down in the description, and give it a shot. Pick a preferred category, randomize a year, and just sit down and read the winning pick. Maybe you'll find a story that you'll end up loving. In any case, hope you guys enjoyed and thanks for watching. Sorry for the delay in videos, turns out I caught the... Uh, the, cut the cocoa, and while I was okay for the most part, my voice is still not all there due to the coughing. Feeling closer and closer to 100% every passing day, so hopefully we'll get back into the rhythm. See you next time, dummies.